Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Insider Financial Talks Penny Stocks. My name is Alex Carlson. I will be your host today. I'm the editor-in-chief of InsiderFinancial.com, and today we're going to be discussing CEI, MJWL, P-U-G-E, and T-O-N-R. But before we get into that, we have a few housekeeping issues to go over. We have no business relationship with any company whose stock is mentioned in this video. Insider Financial and myself are not investment advisors, and this video does not provide investment advice. Always do your own research, make your own investment decisions, or consult with your nearest financial advisor. This video is not a solicitation, a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold securities. This video is our opinion and is meant for informational and educational purposes only, and does not provide investment advice. For more information, please read our full disclaimer at insiderfinancial.com backslash disclaimer. With that out of the way, remember to smash the thumbs up button if you like this video. Also hit the red subscribe button and the little notification bell to be notified when we go live with a new video. So go over to signup.insiderfinancial.com. This is where subscribers get first look at stocks we're going to be covering. Stocks like ENZC at 0.014, ABML at 7 cents, ALPP at 7.5 cents, and HMBL at 0.027. And if you click on the symbol or the percentage gain, it will take you to our original profile that is date and time stamped on insiderfinancial.com as you can see TSNP humble we started covering it November 13th of last year after you sign up with your email you can then sign up with your mobile number it works for all numbers worldwide simply enter your country code first followed by your number for us and canada to be one plus area code and number never begin the format with zero zero it will not work and text messages are the fastest way to get our alerts many times if something hot comes across our desk we will send a text only alert out to our subscribers and the best part is that both our email and text message service are both free we do not run any paid subscription service with out of the way let's dive in here um, it was an overall lackluster week in penny stocks uh, and and I it's really due to CEI uh, the short uh, and distort report uh, from Caresdale Capital really knocked the wind uh, out of not only the CEI sales but also a lot of other small cap stocks a lot of retail traders were in CEI uh, and they got burned uh, it was a tremendous drawdown uh, very very happy to see the bounce. Uh, towards the end of the week would have liked to have seen a close above $2. Uh, I think if, if we close above $2, we can get back to 3 real quick. Um, I've talked about it uh, at length. Uh, my last video was what happened in Camber Energy stock. Uh, I will include link in the description to that. I went into both uh, what the pumpers were doing, Zach Morris, uh, laid back and then what, what uh, Caresdale Capital did. Um, you know, we're used to these short and distort reports. Very, very shocked at the market reaction. Um, I read the report. It was the usual, you know, BS. You know, it, there was some truth to it in, in terms of the preferred stock and, and the outstanding share count. There was more shares outstanding than I think a lot of retail traders uh, were aware of. But, you know, they weren't alleging fraud, criminality. Um, you know, those are the things that usually tank a stock, you know, uh, like, to, you know, to see an 80% pullback. Uh, to see this, what happened, uh, it was just quite shocking. Um, we are staying away from CEI. It has a mind of its own. Uh, it's trading almost a billion shares, you know, $2 billion in volume. Uh, this is hedge funds and algorithms in it now. Uh, the retail investor is not big enough to for these types of swings. Um, it's it's quite insane uh, w what's happening. It, it, and the stock has a mind of its own, um, and that, that's why we're staying away. Um, trade it at your own risk. Um, I think uh, if you want to look at it from a technical perspective, the 200-day moving average is uh, right at a dollar two, uh, one o two. Uh, the 50-day is one eighteen. 
uh, I think you know it just it bounced off that that 200 day moving average and uh, you know and, and you got the shorts covering um, so you know you get that plus dip buyers coming in so I think that is what what fueled the bounce um, I've uh, we've talked about it on the site uh, quite a bit uh, if you go to the magnifying glass you type in any symbol uh, you can take a look at our coverage it's date and time stamped on insiderfinancial.com we said back on uh, September 1st uh, for best penny stocks right now uh, C, uh, CEI and you go over here to uh, September 1st uh, it opened at 49 cents was as low as 45 cents it closed at 66 cents on the day so had you gotten uh, our alert then, um, you know, you, were, you saw a 10-bagger. Um, so, you know, I, I had told everyone that it was uh, uh, a great week for banking profits last weekend. I told everyone that I had sold out. I was out um, and looking for opportunities. Um, I had no idea how fortunate I was you know, with, with getting out, uh, you know, above four bucks. Um, but you know, when you give me a 10 bagger, I'm going to, uh, you know, take profits and, uh, then I can reevaluate and, uh, it just fell so far so fast, um, that I just didn't want to, uh, risk any, uh, any further capital. So, but I am extremely happy for the longs uh, that they got a bounce and I hope it continues and I hope uh, Caresdale Capital uh, gets burned. I hope they get investigated. Um, uh, you know, the market manipulation in CEI was insane and I, I talked about it from both sides. Um, you know, Zach Morris pumping it uh, definitely helped the longs and then uh, the, the short report, uh, you know, killed the longs. So it was just a, a horrible, horrible experience uh, in, in CEI um, and it just deflated the, the wind out of uh, the sales in, the, in a lot of other penny stocks. Um, you know, we're usually seeing many, many, um, you know, triple digit runners, uh, you know, on a given week. Uh, you know, the big runner this week was really just CBTC. Uh, it was up 180%. Um, over here, it's a Bitcoin play. Um, this one had a, you know, decent decent week. Um, CYAP was up 97%. Uh, PUGE, which we're going to talk about, was up 61%. And MJWL was up 32%. Uh, other than that, it was uh, really a, a lackluster week. Um, MJWL is one that we really like. Um, we talked about this one early. Uh, our subscribers are in uh, around 0.014. Um, I said it was a um, set to be the next big crypto runner. Um, this was back in May. Uh, you go over here, you look here, May 22nd, date and time stamped. You go over here, May 22nd, and yep, open at 0.014, um, rally to uh, 3 cents, uh, and then you caught that move to uh, 26 cents. So this one was a big runner of the, uh, huge runner, I mean, uh, 20 bagger uh, in in two months, so it was a you know great winner for subscribers. Then you got the subsequent crash, and uh, now it's starting to make another run. Um, the company is set to acquire another crypto exchange uh, this week. Uh, we're expecting an announcement coming, uh, so we got that catalyst. Uh, they just signed a deal to acquire the majority interest in Bamboo Wellness. Um, this is an AI data analysis company, um, Think Palantir. Um, so, you know, that's what uh, this company does. So, uh, you know, Palantir is a, um, 
NASDAQ play backed by Peter T or NYSE play backed by Peter Thiel with a $45 billion market cap. So uh, MJWL, uh, definitely a, an interesting acquisition there. And we we're excited to see what the, the second crypto exchange that they're buying. So uh, we think this one uh, still has a lot of legs. Um, and, and guys, if you're starting to get discouraged, just, just keep in mind, um, Humble was last year's big runner. Uh, TSMP then became Humble. Um, we had come out on uh, November 13th. Uh, you go over here, you can see uh, November 13th open at 0.0276. This was November. And then you got the incredible run from November to February. So, you know, with it being just, you know, October uh, 9th, we're still early uh, seasonality. Um, November, December, January, February, that's typically been the best months uh, for OTC. So if you are discouraged, uh, please don't be. Um, we think Q4 is gonna be on fire. Um, but you just have to be patient right now. Conserve cash, um, wait for the right opportunities. Um, you know, and that's what we're doing right now. We're being very selective. Um, we're waiting, um, hope to have some alerts next week if, if the market looks uh, appealing, but if it doesn't, uh, we don't send anything out. So uh, if you don't get anything from us, don't be alarmed. Um, we're only, you know, we're looking for our best ideas only. Uh, we're not going to send out alerts just for the sake of sending out. So, uh, you know, make sure you are signed up at signup.insiderfinancial.com so that you get our next alert. Um, PUGE, uh, this has been an incredible runner over the past month. Um, they're set to, uh, um, they got just two acquisitions. Um, Altogether, they could be doing 10 to 20 million in revenues next year, uh, and it has just a $65 million market cap. So, uh, uh, PUGE, it's a holding company. Um, they're talking about uh, uh, doing some spin offs, uh, some other SPACs. Um, definitely a, a company that's uh, getting ready to uh, uh, make some big moves. Um, back in uh, uh, August, uh, they had re uh, hired a new CEO, uh, 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 what's her name, Karen Fordham. Um, she's a big deal in the healthcare space. Um, she was presidency of St. Joseph Hospital. Um, she's been involved in, in uh, running a lot of um, medical companies. So she definitely uh, knows what she's doing. And, uh, you know, for her to take the top job at PUGE, that tells you they're, they're getting ready to do something big in the healthcare space uh, in terms of acquisitions, uh, possible roll-ups. Uh, certainly, uh, this is one I think uh, you definitely want to be paying attention to. Um, this one, uh, it looks to be, uh, you know, at just just above a penny, there's a lot more room this one can run. So definitely, uh, th this is one you, you wanna keep, uh, keep on your radar screen if, if you're not uh, in it already. Lastly is TONR. Um, this is uh, definitely uh, one that can really run. Uh, it's a 10 bagger already, um, but you know, it, it, is still, it only has the yield sign. So it, it's, once it goes pink current, uh, next, uh, it's off and running, and then once it, it identifies, <coughs> sorry about that, folks. Uh, once it identifies its merger uh, partner or does a deal, this thing's off and running again. So, uh, definitely one of the cheapest um, shells uh, on the OTC right now. So, um, you know, with the stop sign BS. Uh, when you got a, uh, a pink yield about to go pink current, uh, it's going to really have its choice of uh, acquisition candidates. So TONR is definitely uh, one uh, you want to have on your radar screen. Uh, dips are definitely uh, are, are to be accumulated in TONR. With that being said, um, just trying to shed some light on what's going on um, on the OTC and, and in penny stocks. I want to wish everyone a wonderful weekend. Uh, make sure you go over to signup.insiderfinancial.com. Uh, this way you don't miss out on any of our alerts. Uh, we think Q4 is going to be very hot. 
with that being said, uh, again, thank you for watching, following, subscribing, and becoming live to you with a new video on Monday. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.